Hello and welcome to O Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a sand dollar. Sand dollars are a part of a group of animals called echinoderms, which also includes animals like sea stars, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. As you'll see in the video, sand dollars have a lot in common with sea stars and sea urchins, both of which we've covered in previous videos. Sand dollars are basically a type of sea urchin that's flattened and not round. So when you hear sand dollar, you might think of those white, hard discs you find on a beach. Those things are actually just the skeletons of dead sand dollars that have been bleached by the sun. Live sand dollars usually have a dark, purplish color, as you can see right here. Those white discs did give the sand dollars their name though. People thought they looked like a large silver coin, just like the old Spanish dollar. Sand dollars have actually evolved to become flattened, as you can see here, because they often burrow underneath the sand instead of traveling on top of it. Their flat shape lets them do this easily. Since sand dollars often live in harsh intertidal zones, with waves crashing over them with a lot of force, burrowing into the sand gives them more protection, and their flat shape also streamlines their bodies so that they can withstand the waves. So now let's take a look at the external anatomy. So this side right here is called the aboral side, while this side, where the mouth is located right here, is called the oral side. Unlike sea urchins, Sand dollars don't have their anus on the aboral side. Rather, it's on this side, right here. It's this hole you see. And this hard covering is the skeleton of the sand dollar, and it's called the test. This is the part that gets bleached white and washes up on beaches when the sand dollar dies. The test is hollow, and most of the animal's soft parts are inside it. It's actually not hollow around the edges, but in the center where the organs are, it's hollow. We'll see this better later. The test is actually an internal skeleton, not external, because the test is surrounded by a very thin epidermis. Now, sand dollars move by walking using their many spines. I think you can see them better if I put it to the side. Unlike sea urchins, sand dollars have many spines that are very short, giving them a fuzzy, velvety appearance. Also unlike sea urchins, sand dollars move using their spines rather than tube feet because they live in sandy areas and tube feet can't find much purchase on sand grains. So you can't really see the tube feet since they're very thin and delicate, but we'll put a picture of it here so you can see what it looks like. So the tube feet and spines also function in feeding they grab onto tiny food particles, like algae and plankton, and push the food along these five food grooves. And as you can see, all five food grooves lead to the mouth right here. And through the position of these five food grooves, you can see that sand dollars, just like sea urchins, exhibit radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is when there's a symmetry around the central axis, just like the slices of a pizza. So I've actually switched to a different specimen so I can show you some other structures better. So on the aboral surface, you can see this curious flower-like structure with five petals. This is called a petaloid, and it's a series of specialized tube feet that functions in respiration. Tube feet are operated by a water vascular system, which works through hydraulic pressure along the sand dollar to move the tube feet by pumping water in and out of the tube feet. In the center of the petaloid on the aboral side is a pore called the madreporite, so right here. The madreporite is the opening to the water vascular system, pumping water in and out to move the tube feet. It's really hard to see here but there is also four tiny pores around the madreporite, like 
this one right here, which are called the gonopores. The gonopores are where the sperm or eggs will be released for reproduction. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Dissecting a sand dollar is actually pretty difficult, first because the test is very hard and difficult to penetrate, and also because the organism is very flat, so all the organs are close to the surface and can easily be damaged as we dissect it. First, you're going to need to chisel yourself a hole. Start around 3 quarters of the way from the center, because if you go too far towards the edge here, it's hard to cut, and if you go too close towards the center, you might damage the organs. So now that I've chiseled out the square window in the test, I'll actually dig a little more. So now we have a space for our scissors to go in. So we take our scissors and carefully cut around the aberral surface, leaving the oral surface intact and not cutting too close to the center. So now that I've removed parts of the test, you can see the internal structures. The most conspicuous thing you see here are the four gonads that lead into the gonopores we saw before. Unlike sea urchins which have five gonads, sand dollars only have four. One, two, three, four. And if I lift this piece of test, we might be able to see the gonads leading into the gonopores. So it's the string we see there. And on the other side as well, We can also see how the gonads lead into the gonopores. These gonads produce sperm or eggs, depending on whether the sand dollar is male or female. There's no real way to tell the sex of the sand dollar by observation though, so this one could be either male or female. Fertilization happens externally in sand dollars, and sand dollars usually live in colonies meaning they live very closely together and synchronize their spawning. This greatly increases the chances of fertilization. After the egg is fertilized, the sand dollar goes through a number of larval and juvenile stages, which look very different from this adult shape. So now I'm going to remove this top piece of the test and also get rid of the gonads. So now let's take a look at the digestive system of the sand dollar. It's very similar to the digestive system of the sea urchin, except kind of compressed flat. The sand dollar's digestive system also only does one circular circuit around the body cavity, while the sea urchin's digestive system switches directions and runs another circuit in the opposite direction, so it has two circuits. This white complicated looking structure in the middle of the floor of the body cavity is called the Aristotle's lantern. And it's kind of flat, but it's a structure that contains the mouth and the pharynx, and also has five teeth inside of it. And at the top of the lantern, the pharynx opens up into the esophagus here, which then leads into this wider part. So I can pick it up. This is the stomach. The stomach then leads into the intestines, which would be around here, but you can't really see them here. The intestines then leads into the rectum, and then the anus. The anus would be somewhere here around this side as we saw before. So here's another sand dollar I dissected, and you can see the intestines a little better here. So here's the esophagus, which then leads into this wide pouch-like structure, which is the stomach, and then the stomach leads into this thinner intestine which you can see here. I'll hold it up. The intestines would then lead out into the rectum, then the anus. So the stomach also has this very thin additional yellow tube that runs alongside it. This tube is called the siphon, 
and it's involved in the reabsorption of water or nutrients from food. So the water vascular system is very difficult to see because it's really delicate and it just gets destroyed when we open it, but we can see some remnants of it. So the water would usually be drawn into the madreporite, which we saw before, and enter the ring canal, which would be around here. And from the ring canal, the water then goes into the five radial canals, which would be along these grooves right here. And you can see these little raised structures along the radial canals. These are called the ampulla, which act as valves for the tube feet that it's connected to on the other side of the test. When the ampulla contracts, the water pressure causes the tube foot to extend, and when the ampulla relaxes, the pressure is released and the tube foot is withdrawn. This allows the sand dollar to manipulate its tube feet. So now let's take a closer look at the Aristotle's lantern. So if I take it out, we'll be able to see the five teeth embedded in the lantern. I'll put a picture up of what the individual teeth look like. Finally, I also snapped a different sand dollar in half to get a transverse section. And if you look at it, we can see how there's an internal space here for the body cavity and all the organs. And then there are these pillars of test at the edges, which makes the sand dollar really hard and rigid. All right, that's the end of the sand dollar dissection. Thanks for watching, folks. Here's a fun fact about sand dollars to send you on your way. Sand dollars have very few predators, at least in their mature state, because they don't have a lot of edible parts, and what little edible parts they have are protected by an extremely hard, difficult to penetrate skeleton, as we saw earlier. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more.